Hello, I'm AppyX Toycat, and the last and biggest mob being added to 1.17 is the Warden. We saw clips from this at Minecon Live, and the basic idea is it's a mob so dangerous, so powerful, that you're not even meant to attack it at any power level, you're just meant to avoid it like a natural disaster. And obviously, the question comes up of like, so does he drop anything cool? And I wanted to directly answer this by showing you a response from King B Dogs, the developer behind both the Deep Dark and the Warden, um, and he responded to someone saying, I watched the Ask Mojang video where you said there's no special loot for the Warden and I got really disappointed. Please set some good loot for him, you know, obviously because he's so dangerous. And the response was, the point is to have special loot in the chests. We don't want to encourage players to kill the Warden. The point of the Warden is not to kill it. Even if you do kill it, the rewards are not in killing it. The point is to get around it. It's going to be one of the first stealth parts of Minecraft, it kind of sounds like, but that gets the bravado going with any Minecraft player who's like, you know what, I think I can take down the Warden. So we have messages like this one from Hovatron saying, I'm already coming up with plans to fight the Warden. Really Are they lava proof? Because, TNT uh, traps? How about explosive crossbow bolts? And ignoring that that last one doesn't exist in Minecraft. Uh, the point is that I think that it will be impossible to design a mob um, that is actually resistant to all the ways that Minecraft players work with things. Um, because think about it, right? Like, they could make the warden really good, um, you know, at like avoiding little traps where you attack him through a block. Um, and then obviously you're going to start using stuff like lava and traps and whatnot. Uh, they could make him resistant to lava, but what about TNT? You could make it resistant to TNT and lava and enchantment and all of your potions, uh, but at some point I think like you can't have the warden be more powerful than the ender dragon, which is only resistant to lava, enchantments, and potions. Uh, you can try those if you really want to. Um, so uh, the direct, the interesting response from this, again from King B Dogs, uh, because someone said to him, my main worry with the warden is that stealthing around it will be practically mandatory because I hate it when non-stealth games have enforced stealth moments because I have ADHD and I don't like being forcefully slowed. And side note, I want to mention, I hate being slowed down artificially too, like give me the choice the self and I'll love taking it, but also sometimes you want to go in guns blading. I love games that give you the choice because it feels good to choose to do something, not to be forced into it. And King B Dog says this is a good point and something I've been thinking about. To be honest, I don't know the solution other than having an extremely late game reward that makes the warden pretty easy to deal with. The only problem is that it somewhat defeats the purpose. I don't know yet. So this is really interesting that there might be a kind of foil to the warden. There's going to be something, you know, hypothetically right, there's a enchantment for neverite gear that you can put on there and it's instant slay to the warden. Maybe Bane of Arthropods because he's a secretly insect. Like, wouldn't that be interesting if there was a way to basically insta slay it to just get rid of them? I personally think that's a good idea. I, I think, again, enforced stealth is uh, one option, but having in, uh, you know, stealth be the easier of two options is a fine way to do things, but you can't say you have to stealth. Again, the point of Minecraft, in my opinion, is about making choices, and if the deep dark has some great reward, then, you know, the choice should be stealth or come back way later when the loot probably doesn't mean as much to you, uh, but if you want to feel like a badass, you can. I think, again, making the Warden harder than the Wither and the Ender Dragon, both of which you're expected to be, would be a little bit ridiculous. But again, it's entirely uh, Minecraft's choice. It's entirely King Bee Dog's choice. Um, it's just something I wanted to mention uh, in today's Q&A Sunday, by the way. This is the weekly series that is definitely always on a Sunday. It's not the Seed Sunday is taking a break and I'm replacing it with a Q&A. No, that's not what's happening. So with that said, let's move into the third question on this Q&A Sunday, which has definitely always been its name. Because Lego Boy 7 107 asks, am I the only one who's low-key kind of triggered by this? Referring, of course, to the brand new ore changes that they're making. They're changing the textures for all of them. And he says that the ore texture was too iconic before, and the color was plenty sufficient to distinguish them. However, Lego Boy 7107, I, I don't disagree. that I love the way it was before. However, you've got to consider that not everyone can see colors. I know everyone pictures color blindness as being like black and white vision, uh, but some people can't see different, uh, you know, like uh, parts of uh, the color spectrum. So um, that's actually one in 12 men and and one in 200 women. It's way more common in men for a really fun uh, reason to do with like dominant traits or something. I never fully understand it, but yeah, uh, one in 12 men uh, do have color blindness and therefore have issues with at least one of the ores you can see back here. And personally, I'd say I fall into the controversial group that says even that's not enough. I think like it's fine to do, but especially when you're changing something that already exists um, in a way that, you know, people who do already use it aren't going to like just for the benefit of a small group. Even if you're increasing accessibility for disabled people, I still think even even then, you've got to make the justification as to why it's good otherwise, or at least not affecting everyone else. And yeah, this does affect you, but I think it's a good thing for everyone, because look at the or old or textures, they're all exactly the same, and that's a problem because, I mean, when I first spotted it, I was like, that's some lazy design, but even beyond the, like, immediate first impression it gives you, it also gives, and, and even beyond the color blindness issue, but for people who can't see different colors entirely, also consider the fact that most of the time when you're mining, it's at least somewhat dark. You can't tell the difference between iron and gold, 
it's hard to tell the difference between diamond and gold for the exact same reason. Whereas now, you know, like, first of all, I think the new textures are actually pretty nice. They're all kind of uh, representative of what the blocks are meant to be. They're all very slightly different. I like that the gold ore is the nether gold texture. That's fun. Now that's a consistent texture across dimensions. But also it means that when it's dark, you should be able to, if you're good at Minecraft, spot what a texture is. And that's what I think the big benefit of this is. We're going to have unique ores that make the different parts of the underground feel like very slightly different places. And um, I think way more importantly than that, they did keep the old diamond texture. It's not like the iconic texture is gone. It's just now that is the texture exclusively for diamonds. And I think that's almost better, you know, that makes diamond the OG ore, the more cool ore. And uh, the, the other ores are ones you'll get used to in no time and think, huh, imagine a world where they used to all be different. That must have been years ago. Huh, it was 2021 when they changed that. And yeah, that's how I really feel this will be in a while. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'll regret all of this. Something I won't regret though is responding to your comment, the Larkman, because it, he says, uh, does it seem to anyone else like they're going to integrate 0 to 64 in existing chunks by changing the existing bedrock to Grimstone? And actually, you know, when I first read this, I was like, that is actually genius. I couldn't think of an easy way to integrate, you know, layer minus 64 in existing chunks. I honestly assumed they wouldn't do it because of backwards compatibility. But what if they did take the existing bedrock and just converted it to Grimstone? It'd be like all of a sudden one day you were able to mine below this block that you couldn't before. That's what the Minecraft update would do. And then they could generate the new chunks down there, but still giving you the option to be like, actually, I'm going to leave my Grimstone there so I can have a floor at the bottom of my world. I love the idea in theory. However, there's a little bit of an issue. The first one is the fact that if you look at this, uh, you know, map, which is uh, the terrain map put out by Henrik Nieper, it, it's it's the official map where the ores are meant to generate. But if you look closely at this map, you can see that Grimstone generates pretty high up, a lot higher than uh, Bedrock generates, uh, even though it's roughly Y0. You can see it has a very random dispersed placement in some places. It, you know, even though it's very similar to the old Bedrock, it doesn't directly replace it one to one. And although that's not entirely a reason not to, it does remove the perfect thematicness of like, oh yeah, they could they could just replace it and argue it was like that all along. But I think uh, because of this, they probably won't be able to do that. Also, you've got to consider that like you'd find so many new diamonds below the diamonds that you already found, and like maybe there'd be some game balance issues. I think that this is going to be one of the big questions they consider. But I like that this is now one of the options. I wouldn't say it's guaranteed or even likely, but I'd say this is one of the more likely options. They either do this or they just leave your bedrock at layer zero in existing chunks and then new chunks are negative 64. Um, or they do the weird kind of wall or like a slope down into the new terrain. Again, they've got lots of different options to play around with and I'm curious to see what they do because they are going to have to pick at some point and that point is probably going to be this next week. I'm excited to see it. I'll let you know the moment we find out. But also I'll let you know the answer to questions like this one because Easton Maxfield asks, will the deep dark be added to existing caves? And again, really interesting question. Like, so backwards compatibility, how's it going to work? And my initial thought was like, I guess, I mean, they could do something where they make the existing, uh, you know, caves into different biomes by accident. But I, I actually consider that that's almost certainly not going to happen. Think about the Never, right? The Never had one biome before, and then the Never update turned it into five. All of the old Never was considered to be the Never Waste biome, even though there was no real Never biomes before that. It all kind of uh, was uh, kept as the same biome, and then anything new generated as one of those new five biomes. Caves will be getting roughly five biomes. It's, it, it might be more by the end, um, but those new biomes will only generate in chunks you haven't explored prior to 1.617. Uh, and the reason that that's true, it seems kind of like, but I want deep dark in my existing caves, is because they don't want to mess with your existing stuff. Minecraft, when it updates, they have a big, like, almost like a prime directive rule. They don't want to mess with things how they are now. They want to give you new options for new chunks in your world, or give you new options for a brand new world, but they're not going to mess with your existing stuff. And that includes not changing the biome to be a deep dark or a dripstone or anything else like that. So don't fear any wardens in your existing world, mostly because your world doesn't go down to minus 64. But that dives back into that same problem, which again, I'm excited to, to come back to. Anyway, that's it. Let's move into the next question here because Creative Gamer asks, wow, at IBX Toycat, you pump out great content really fast. How do you do it? Pre-record or record a topic you think of immediately. Do you have a to-do list? Can you make a video on it? I love your videos too. So I read this at first and I was like, ah, that's like some sarcasm or something, right? Like this, this has to be a, a, a you know, like someone either like playing it on too, uh, too thick or it's like a joke. Like as far as my own eyes are concerned, it's like, oh, every, every day I stress about 
Uh, like wh what I'm uploading and if it's good enough and like, oh, no one's gonna like this one and <laughs> you know, whatever else it is, I, I guess that's like the norm on YouTube. But as far as like, uh, you, know, you know, even if we just ignore like the quality of the videos, cause it's it's impossible to complement your YouTube video quality given that they have to be done every day. So let, let's instead say like, what's the deal with the ideas? And the simplest uh, explanation for that, cause people think that every day I come up with something new on the day, that actually would be terrifying. That is something that makes me go, ooh, not my favorite thing, but I do have a huge list of video ideas. I once went over the 12 pages or something of ideas that I was like not deleting, but was like archiving because I had too many, I had to get rid of them. So just to give you examples of like what's on my list right now, um, what if I recreate East Germany inside of Minecraft? And it's like, well, that's a bit of a, a weird one, but maybe one day I'll just be like, yeah, we're doing that today. Or I, I wanna make another video of ways people are wrong about Minecraft because I'm mad about everyone complaining at me about like not repairing my pickaxe, even though you shouldn't repair your pickaxe pickaxe until it gets very, very close to being gone. Or, um, for instance, I want to talk about the steepest staircase in Minecraft, or uh, things that minorly annoy me about the Java edition, even though I, I like the game, I, I find things really annoying when I go into it for snapshots. The missing Minecraft update. Things that you shouldn't build in Minecraft. Even more of them. That's like a series. I want to get back to that. I've got a bunch of ideas about it. Um, things nobody wants in Minecraft, or how Minecraft can fix these terrible features. Uh, Minecraft features we love, but are accidental. When is 1.17 coming out? You know, give the latest update on that. People love to hear all of the information on something condensed into one place. Can you beat Minecraft using only beds and lava? Can you beat Minecraft if you're always at bedrock? Can you beat Minecraft if you're a villager? Uh, so on and so forth. And this is only the first few pages. There's another like... Yeah, there's a lot more and realistically like a lot of these ideas suck. Like if I scroll all the way down to the bottom, it's like you're committing tax fraud and here's how. Um, there's, there's ones like go how to never die again or uh, the solution to the Minecraft problem. That sounds like I'm writing a manifesto. Um, which mobs aren't coming, and then it just sh says sharks underneath it. Basically, I, I have a lot of ideas that I'm always like wanting to make videos on, and I think that's like the healthy way you have to be when it comes to daily uploads, if you don't want to go crazy. Or maybe I am going crazy, and this video is proof of that. All I know, though, is I want to respond to the next question here, which comes in from Simpilot95. Will there be Grimstone tools? So no, the way it works is Grimstone is effectively cobblestone when it comes to uh, recipes. Um, you can make stone pickaxes, stone axes, furnaces, etc. from Grimstone. There is no good reason to do so unless you're down at Grimstone Lair, you've ran out of everything else and you do have some Grimstone and some sticks but no iron or anything and you want to make some tools but it's really not recommended because Grimstone is just harder to get than cobblestone. So um, yeah, you can make grimstone tools, but they're just stone tools. And it's really interesting that they give another alternative to stone tools in this update for the overworld, those deep dark caves, um, or, or like, I guess the entire deep uh, caves in Minecraft, uh, because they added the exact same thing with blackstone in the last update. They made it so in the nether, you could still craft stone tools. And if they've done that twice now, in addition to cobblestone, I think it's entirely reasonable to assume that we're gonna be seeing a brand new type of end stone that's actually like a cobblestone replacement. Because uh, trust me, as someone who's made a village out in the end. It is really hard to get anything out there. There's no wood equivalent. There's no stone equivalent. So um, yeah, I wonder if uh, that's a little bit of a hint at the next update maybe. Also, this is one of those things that people are like uh, crazy like, oh, Toy Cat, can't believe you didn't mention that. Again, there is no reason you should ever be making Grimstone tools unless you are desperate. It is your second night in Minecraft or maybe the combination of those two things. And again, I just to clarify, Grimstone is a pretty block when you make it into bricks, not very useful when you make it into pickaxes. With that said though, let's move into the next question from Manfan Nanta, who says, where is my archeology span though? Well, first of all, it's not your archeology, span it's our archeology. Span uh, communism joke aside, um, but second of all, uh, archaeology is being worked on by, uh, by Ulraf, and you might think like, wait, so we're this many months into snapshots, but he hasn't done anything? Wow, is he being lazy? What a lazy dude. Boo, fire him, or whatever uh, craziness the internet will say. But no, the reality behind it is that every single week, Minecraft developers are all working on their little corners of the game, and when they're finished with those features, they throw them into that week's snapshot. Again, it can really seem like when you're looking at it, like, oh yeah, every week they do all this work, you know, in just the last week alone, they made Grimstone from scratch, they textured it, they put it in the game, etc, etc, etc. No, the, the way it works is they, they all work on things and when they're finished, they throw them into the snapshot for us to play around with. And so archaeology, I imagine, again, we haven't heard otherwise, and it is Olraf's pet project, archaeology is likely the thing that he's been working on this whole time, and uh, that makes it sound like it's one of those like big uh, features that obviously no, no single part of it's been finished yet, he wants to put it all in there together. So we'll see archaeology when we see archaeology, whether that's a scrap, whether that's 
that's the whole thing. We don't know for sure though, but just be assured that it's being worked on. Just because you're not seeing it, that just means they haven't finished any part or they don't want to ship any part to us uh, until it is finished. So with that said, let's move into the final uh, question here, which is from Do It For The Cringe, who says, can we get a use for bats, please? I mean, they live in caves, right? Give them a use. And yes, please, again, if anyone from Mojang is ever watching this video, uh, and a few people uh, from that from there do say they watch my videos, and it makes me feel uh, very, very, very complimented. Thank you, by the way. But um, if you're watching this video, please give bats a use. I mean, think about it. 1.4 is like the first update where they added a useless mob to Minecraft, and it started, uh, you know, we're realizing with pandemics this year that there's always like a patient zero Patient zero for the useless mob epidemic is the bat. Ever since then, we've just figured, you know, why don't we just add mobs to Minecraft? They don't need to have purposes. I mean, it's the fact that they're there is purpose enough. No, that's not how this works. If I wanted 100 useless mobs, you can download mods that do that very easily. I want to have useful mobs. And the bats, given that they're patient zero, if we could make them useful, we could, we could solve so much. You know, like world hunger, gone. Uh, you know, like issues in the issues in the insert country here, civil war, gone. No, it would all be gone. Oh, are you really worried about like the world health crisis? No, you shouldn't be worried about it. You should be worried about bats and Minecraft. And here's my idea, because it is really hard to give bats a use. They're pretty much useless. They don't even drop XP. What if there's a cave update and they live in caves? Uh, what if bats only came in handy in big? That only generated in big caves. I mean, obviously, bats don't want to live in small caves. They want big caves. And so when you heard bats, you know you know there'd be a cave nearby. Just like how you could um, hear out a zombie spawner by hearing like the noise from you know a zombie. I would, I would love it if you could uh, hear a bat and be like, there's a big cave there. I want a big cave. Please do it. If anyone at Mojo, let me call in all my favor cards, make the bat useful and we can save the world together, you and me, but mostly you, honestly. With that said though, I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did, like it or something, share it if you really liked it, and I'm just kidding. I hope you have a nice day. That's more important to me than you rating this video five stars. And uh, I hope that I see you all next week for Q&A Sunday, which might be on a SAS day for some reason. I don't know what that's all about. Guess Toy Cat's trying something new. But uh, yeah, Seed Sunday will return at some point, but that point is not right now. Uh, so yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll see you later. Also, I'm live streaming. I, I, I like to mention that at the end of videos, so you know that I'm streaming, because YouTube notifications don't always do it for you. But yeah, see you. Goodbye.